Hey Brian here, thanks for watching this video. Caleb does a really good job of showing a way of crimping that makes for a better connection that's gonna last longer. Depends on a few things. I'll kind of show you at the end a few other techniques that I use in order to make a crimp that's gonna last. Um, but big thanks to Caleb for making this video. Hope you enjoy. All right, so what I've noticed a lot of guys do is when they're making a crimped connection with these spade terminals, what they'll end up doing is they'll only do a single crimp where the exposed conductor meets the metal um, side of the spade terminal, which is perfectly fine until as it keeps getting tugged on and off, you see how it's bending like that. It's, you know, it's bending independent of the insulation of the wire. Eventually what will happen is this will slip off as this uh, connection becomes corroded. It's just crimped down to the threaded conductor wire. So what I wanna show you guys real quick is the importance of double crimping. We got a brand new spade terminal here. We're gonna cut off just a little less than what you would expect to see. We're gonna make the first crimp just, you know, as usual to get, get right there on that conductor. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide down and then right there on the insulator, we're gonna crimp that down as well. So now the spade terminal is connected to not just the conductor wire, but also to the insulation around the conductor. And it's not going anywhere. If it bends, you see how the, the, the difference now is not bending independently, it's bending with the wire. It's gonna keep it from scoring that conductor and it's gonna keep it from snapping off in time. Also, another thing I've noticed is that uh, when, you're when you're using a crimp tool, make sure you're using the insulated side if you're using an insulated terminal. And then the, here's the non-insulated crimping tool side if you're gonna crimp a, crimp a connector that is not insulated. There you go. All right, so just to follow up on Caleb's double crimp, um, one thing to point out is there's different types of insulated terminals. These are actually the ones that I use most often now, which is actually a heat shrink terminal. So after I make my crimp, you know, you heat it up and that shrinks it down. And especially with the advent of battery powered heat guns. And then also I use a little butane, a little butane heater as well in order to shrink this down. It makes it really nice, especially for just protecting the entire terminal, because as you can see, this extends pretty far back along the wire, which kind of solves part of the problem that Caleb was showing. The thing I wanted to show you here though, is the barrel on this one's really narrow. So that might make a double crimp tricky. Also in this case, if you choose a smaller size, you won't necessarily always be able to get the insulation under the metal part under the barrel to do a second crimp. And so in some cases, you know, if you have a terminal like this, a double crimp may not be practical. I still like it in this sort of case. So if you were gonna use this wire here, you would strip it back very short, sort of like Caleb showed. Strip it back only about that far. Maybe even a little shorter, might even snip off a little bit of the end there and then push the wire all the way in against the stop. Now I can crimp here and here and that will uh, tighten it against the insulation as well, which will make a better, better connection. So I really like that. But another thing I wanted to show quickly is there's also a couple different types of crimpers for insulated connectors. So this is a ratchet action crimper for insulated connectors that I really like. It tends to get it a little tighter. And then you've got your insulated connector crimper here. Now, some people will use this. I mean, I've used this for most of my career, even for insulated connectors. Just keep in mind when you do that, you're going to make a little indent that could, you know, could potentially create a short circuit. With a heat shrink connector, you're not in as much danger because as you heat shrink it back, it'll generally kind of self heal, but it really just depends on the quality of the connector. But one other thing I wanted to show you quickly, if you're ever connecting to like a thermostat wire, like a typical 18 gauge solid strand wire, I've showed this before, but I wanna just kind of double down on this. What I would do is strip it double long and then you bend it over. So then you double it over, slip it into the connector, and then you make your crimp. And that grips a lot better. So now when I crimp down on that, that's gonna make a much better crimp. So we'll just do a demonstration. This is a blue terminal, so we'd use the blue crimp on this ratchet crimper. That is really, really tight. You can see it didn't compromise the insulation. And now when I heat this up, it's gonna give me a nice protective sheath. And that's not going anywhere. Whereas if I had crimped down on just a single strand, that could potentially give me a problem. So again, I, I, I love the double crimp technique. It really just depends on the terminal that you're using, the size of the wire, there's some other factors there. Um, if you ever find that you're having trouble with your uninsulated crimper, making it really tight, then get one of these uh, ratcheting crimpers to help out. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, hope to catch you on the next video.